If you're a woman in the Church of Christ, this message is for you. But if you're not, please stay as our honored guest. All women are welcome here. Today we'll answer the question, do you have an attitude of gratitude? When I was in second grade, we had a gift exchange at school for Christmas, and I was so excited. Girls were to bring a gift for a girl and boys for a boy. I helped my mother pick out something really good, and I could not wait to see what I would get. Finally, it was time to open the gifts, and I was devastated. I got a puzzle. A puzzle? I hate puzzles. What crazy person thought it was a good idea to take a perfectly good picture, cut it up in pieces, just so you could put it back together again? Huh. Well, I marched over there and told that girl what I thought of her stupid puzzle. The girl burst into tears and <laughs> my teacher showed me what she thought of my little display with the backside of a paddle. Yep, they used to paddle us back then. Did you know that there are people who actually like puzzles? I know, isn't it crazy? Wait, so you're one of them? You like puzzles? Well, then I guess there you go. Over the years, I've discovered that most people give a gift based on what they would like to receive. I'm sure that this little girl loved puzzles and thought it was a great gift. Unfortunately, I did not share her opinion. Small children give gifts of opportunity. Just last week at school, I had a little boy present me with flowers he had pulled up out of the grass. Of course they were weeds, but he didn't know that, and he was just simply happy to give me something. Every mother, grandmother, aunt, teacher, lady next door, we've all received at least one masterpiece artwork from a small child, and maybe a few of you have received more interesting gifts like small animals, rocks, or even poison ivy. There is a routine we all go through when we get a gift, regardless of who it's from. We smile excitedly, open the gift, and say, thank you. Now, a well-loved gift will be used, but those that are not, well, they may end up in the back of a closet or maybe even in a drawer. That happens because the person giving the gift did not truly know what we wanted. They guessed, they tried. So we accept the gift with the love in which it was given, but we never actually use it. Now, think of the gifts that God gives to you every day. John 1:17. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. While the issue with gifts from humans may be the giver did not get it right, God does not have that problem. Every day he gives us perfect gifts. They are just what we need when we need it. So why don't we appreciate his gifts as we should? Could it be that we don't appreciate them because we don't actually see them as for what they truly are, gifts from God. What do I mean? Well, let me ask you this. Did you wake up this morning? That's a gift from God. Do you have food to eat today? That's a gift from God. Did the sun come up? <laughs> you guessed it. That too is a gift from God. Our families, our intellect, our opportunities, and even some disappointments are all gifts from God. Now, why did I say that a disappointment could be from God? I said it because sometimes God says no. That person, opportunity, or possession we wanted so badly may not be good for us. We must remember that God sees the big picture. We can only see today. But God knows what tomorrow will bring. So here's the best part. If something bad happens in our life, God will bless that too. No, 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 God doesn't give the bad, but he can take even the most devastating circumstances in your life and use it for his glory, if we'll only let him. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Did you see that? All things, not just the good, but all things work together. It's the big picture that's important. So that health scare can cause you to live a healthier life. That job loss may spur you to get more education or even find a better job. 
That unexpected pregnancy may just be the child that grows up and will care for you in your old age. Even the death of a loved one can remind you just how precious life is and you will appreciate the people you have in your life today even more. This life is hard, but I have witnessed time and time again God's mercy and love as he sends just the right things and just the right people in to help with those who are suffering. Our Christian family can be a true gift when times are tough. My sisters, the challenge here is to walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. I don't know why the things that have happened in my life have happened. I can't explain why I actually had cancer twice, or my chronic GI issues, or even losing my mom right after we moved here. I can't explain why some of the things that I begged God for never happened. But I can tell you how God worked through everything in my life to help me and was there for me every time I needed him. I can also look back and see how things that I thought were bad at the time led me to something even better. It's all about having an attitude of gratitude. Being able to say, thank you, God. Thank you for the good things and thank you for helping me get through the bad. I've discovered that being grateful, especially for things I didn't ask for, can be the greatest blessings of all. <sighs> so I guess if you're that little second grade girl that gave me the puzzle, I wanna say I'm sorry, I didn't understand, and thanks for the gift that I should have been grateful for at the time. I now know that puzzles can really improve brain function. <laughs> That's probably why I received the gift in the first place. Too bad I didn't use it back then. Man, I could have been so much smarter today. So maybe I'll start doing puzzles now. Nah, probably not. Okay, so I still have much to learn. But I do know this. God is good all the time. And for that, I am truly thankful. Do you have an attitude of gratitude? If you don't, ask God to help you change your perception. Reach out to a Christian sister who does and get her to help you see how God can and will work through even the darkest moments in your life. This is earth. We're not in heaven yet. Ask God to help you see his providence and his care for your life. God does not give the bad but he can work through it. Keep walking in faith and know that God loves you and that one day you'll be in heaven with him for eternity and none of this stuff here on earth will matter anymore. We're all just pilgrims on a journey. That's the best way to have an attitude of gratitude. I hope you'll give my message from God's word some serious thought and prayer. Please check out my website to find out more about me, my latest Bible study book, videos, blog post, and even upcoming events. I have a couple of new books supposed to be coming out later this year, and I'll be posting that there as well. But until we are together again, my sisters, please don't forget that God loves you, and so do I.